Okay, so I think we're ready to actually uh, get underway. Hi, Ran. Hello. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Okay, anyway, um, my name is Jeff Sturman, and uh, along with my wife, Ruth, we are the owners of Best Cruises and Tours and cruises to Alaska.com. And first of all, as I said before, I want to thank you for taking time today to attend this wonderful Alaska webinar. And I, I introduce you to my co-host, and that's Randy Dixon. And Randy, Hi guys. <laughs> Randy's one of our Alaska experts and um, our primary tour guide for our escorted Alaska cruise tours. And uh, Randy's going to come back a little later, but she's getting ready to host our first Alaska cruise tour yes. for 2024. She'll be leaving, what, about two weeks? Uh, May 25th. Yeah, a little less and, than that. Okay. And this is what, I think your 15th time that you're going to Alaska? So uh, It's my 13th year, but probably in the 20s for the amount of time I've escorted a tour. Okay. Okay. So just a little bit of housekeeping. Randy's going to come back. A little bit later. Bye, everybody. Um, okay. So for this event, all the participants will be muted. If you have a question, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom window. You can type in questions at any time. And at the end of the presentation, we will go over as many as we have time for. And also, after the webinar, you will get an email from us uh, with links to everything I'm about to go over include detailed pricing, departure dates, details about our special offers, contact information. So if we haven't got to your question, you can give us a call. It'll you're, you're gonna get this information within about 48 hours. So for those of you that don't know us, Best Cruises and Tours have been in business for over 30 years. We've sent about 130,000 of your friends and neighbors on vacations all over the world. We are one of the largest independent uh, travel agencies in New Jersey. So just, I don't have to tell you how the recent pandemic had affected travel. Actually, vacation travel had just ceased to exist from March of 2020 for close to two years. Well, it's 2024 now and people are traveling and actually have been since last year. This year looks to be one of our best years ever in the travel business. We're seeing signs that 2025 is even going to be stronger. We have never been busier. Last year, <clears throat> we had groups going up past the Arctic Circle in search of the Northern Lights. We had a good-sized group traveling to Japan and South Korea. We had over 300 guests traveling to Alaska. We had a group doing river cruising on the Danube. Earlier this year, we took a group on the Mississippi, and we just completed a group on a river cruise in France from Paris to Normandy. And we have close to 350 guests going to Alaska this summer. Travel is back. Travel is an entitlement that we have earned. We worked all our lives to be able to see new things, enjoy new experiences, so the good news is that travel is happening again with no restrictions. So we're here today because we're interested in learning about Alaska as a travel destination. So like there's a disconnect between, I wanna see Alaska, it's on my bucket list. What's the best way to do it? There's so many choices, where do I begin? So you can always try to do it yourself. You can go on the internet or engage AI or Google Cruises to Alaska. In 2025, there'll be over 40 different ships sailing in Alaska. So you can call one of the cruise lines that go to Alaska and speak to one of their hourly employees who may or may not have ever been to Alaska. So if you wanna do this yourself, you can. <clears throat> but if you wanna make your Alaska trip a lifetime experience, you're in the right place. So today I'm gonna to talk about Alaska I'm going to talk a little bit about who we are, Best Cruises and Tours. We'll talk a little bit about Princess Cruises and their Alaska program. We'll go over some special offers we have for you, and hopefully we'll have some time for Q&A. And I can promise you 
that the end of this webinar, you'll have a better understanding of Alaska as a vacation destination. So interest in Alaska has been growing and growing and growing over the last decade. The number of Alaska visit visitors had approached 2 million people annually prior to the pandemic, <clears throat> and it's well on its way to reaching those numbers again. I think there were about 1.6 million visitors in 23 just on, on the cruises. So we're heading back to that 2 million mark. So why do you think that travel to Alaska continues to increase? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but there are two really important ones. Number one, there is a worry about climate change affecting the landscape of Alaska. Many of the glaciers are receding and there are even reports of the permafrost being affected. And the second reason is that we have seen attempts to open previously protected areas for oil drilling and mining. Now, Alaska is a truly extraordinary place with its spectacular natural wonders, its open spaces and its magnificent wilderness. People wanna see Alaska before these factors affect this spectacular landscape and wildlife. So, have a little history lesson here. Alaska was unexplored when Secretary of State William Seward arranged for its purchase from Russia for 7.2 million bucks. And that was in 1867. Price worked out two cents an acre. And at the time, it was considered one of the worst real estate deals ever. It was widely ridiculed as Seward's folly. Well, here's the update on Seward's folly. Since the Alaska gold rush of 1880, almost $3 billion worth of gold has been mined. More importantly, in 1968, a large oil and natural gas reservoir up near Prudhoe Bay on the Arctic coast was discovered with estimated recoverable 10 billion barrels of oil and 27 trillion cubic feet of gas. So I guess two cents an acre turned out to be a pretty good investment. And a land, Alaska is a land where animals outnumber people and nature is truly in charge. You will see pristine landscapes, majestic wildlife, scenic national parks, and fortress-like glaciers. So here are some fun facts about Alaska. It's big. You could fit Texas into Alaska twice. Alaska is 1,400 miles north to south and 2,400 miles east to west, one-fifth the size of the continental United States. Alaska has the most and largest glaciers on Earth, 3 million lakes, 3,000 rivers, 70 volcanoes. It is the home of North America's highest mountain peak, Denali, at over 20,300 feet, and 19 of the highest mountains in the U.S. are located in Alaska. And of course, Denali, the mountain which you're looking at, is in Denali National Park, which covers more than 6 million acres. That's about the size of Massachusetts. Alaska has more wilderness than all the other 49 states combined. And of course, one of the most thrilling aspects of a visit to Alaska is the opportunity of observing Alaska's abundant wildlife in their natural habitats. Alaska is home to the longest sheltered waterway on earth. It's called the Inside Passage. And during the summer months, more than 2,000 humpback whales feed in the waters off Alaska. And equally abundant are uh, belugas, killer whales, dolphins, sea lions, seals, sea otters, and an incredible diversity of birds. And Alaska has the largest concentration of bears, bald eagles, salmon, and moose in the world. As a matter of fact, approximately 2,000 moose live within the Anchorage city limits, and there are more caribou than people in Alaska. Alaska is steeped in Native American culture. There are actually 11 major Native cultural groups that have lived there for over 30,000 years. Native Americans now still make up 16% of the population of Alaska, and many of their traditions have survived still an important part of today's Alaska culture. 
And of course, Alaska has tremendous political significance for all of us being a major source of oil and natural gas. So the population of Alaska is just under 725,000. Population of New Jersey, where our offices are, is about 9 million. So we could fit 75 New Jerseys in Alaska. And on this screen is what a traffic jam in Alaska looks like. So I gave you some quick facts about Alaska. Now I'd like to give you some quick facts about us, about best cruises. As I mentioned, we are a family-owned travel agency. We've been in business over 30 years. We've evolved to be one of the larger volume independently owned travel agencies in the Northeast. By the year's end, we will have, we'll have sent over 130,000 guests on cruises, cruise tours, and land vacations to itineraries all over the world from Antarctica to Europe, to the Orient, to Africa, to Caribbean, Hawaii, Australia, Tahiti, China, Japanese, Japan, Bermuda, and of course, Alaska. We're members of the Better Business Bureau. We are rated A plus, and we enjoy top producer status with most of the major cruise lines and travel suppliers. But our most important endorsements come from our thousands of satisfied clients. Our number one source of new business is repeat clients and their referrals. And we are successful because of our dedicated commitment to service. We have two rules we live by. One, we treat all our clients' vacation as if they were our own. And two, we don't allow surprises unless they're good ones. So when we started our business <clears throat> in the early 90s, Alaska had always intrigued me as a destination. I made my first trip 1995, that's 30 years ago. I was so impressed that we began booking vacations to Alaska immediately and our business has been growing, growing, growing ever since. We developed an Alaska brand called cruisestoalaska.com and we now hold the distinction of being one of the largest Alaska travel suppliers in the Northeast. Uh, to date, our agency agents has sent about 10,000 clients on memorable Alaska vacations. We're members of the ATIA, that's the Alaska Tourism Industry Association, and the ACBB, which is Anchorage Convention and Visitors Board, which is now called Visit Anchorage. All of our advisors have been to Alaska, can offer insight, insight based on firsthand experience. I personally have made 40 trips to Alaska. I am a certified Alaska expert with the Alaska State Travel Industry Association. Our co-hostess, who you met, Randy, has been escorting Alaska tours for over 10 years. So in case you haven't figured this out yet, Alaska is my favorite place in the whole world. So we know a little bit about Alaska. We know a little bit about best cruises. And now I will tell you a little bit about our partners for this event and our preferred supplier for Alaska, which is Princess Cruises. So the 2025 season next year marks the 56th anniversary for Princess sailing in Alaska. They have seven ships scheduled to depart from five convenient home ports including Seattle, Vancouver, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Anchorage. They have 155 cruise departures covering 18 different itineraries, plus over 26 different cruise tour itineraries. Now we do business with all the major suppliers, but the most important reason that we are talking about Princess in Alaska is we have found they provide the highest levels of satisfaction and offer the best all around seamless Alaska experience. They built and operate their own purpose-built lodges. They have five of them and they own and operate some of the highest rated luxury rail cars in the industry, as well as their own fleet of deluxe motor coaches. So this ensures a seamless experience between the crews the transportation, whether it's the coach or the domed rail cars and the lodges. Uh, as a matter of fact, Princess regularly has approximately 1,800 employees just devoted to the Alaska product. 
and all the Princess Cruise Tours feature the two highest rated destinations in Alaska, which is Denali National Park and Glacier Bay National Park on every single cruise tour itinerary. The Princess ships feature onboard naturalists and U.S. park rangers that do daily enrichment programs. And on the land, po the land portion, Princess features Alaskan guides who are available every step of the way to enhance your Alaskan experience. Princess has even formed a partnership with the Discovery Channel and Animal Planet, and they create proprietary excursions exclusively for Princess guests. Our relationship with Princess goes back since our inception, which is over 30 years, and we have evolved to be one of their top Alaska cruise tour producers. So what happens is we begin working on our Alaska program about a year and a half in advance. We review the extensive product offerings they have, and based on our experience and expertise, we select what we feel are the most important cruises and cruise tours. We customize them where necessary. We block space. We negotiate special rates so we can offer our clients the best selection of Alaska cruises and tours at the lowest possible prices. So let's start to take a look at some of the Alaska vacation options. So the simplest Alaska vacation is a seven day cruise that's round trip from Seattle. It's an excellent choice for those clients that only have a limited amount of time, want to experience Alaska on a wonderful cruise ship with a terrific itinerary, and with Seattle as an arrival and departure port, it's the most convenient Alaska option as far as air arrangements go. So this seven night cruise will start in Seattle. It'll cruise through the inside passage. It'll make disembarkation sightseeing stops in the Southeast Alaska towns of Juneau, Skagway, Ketchikan, It'll do a day of cruising into Glacier Bay National Park, very important. It'll make a stop in British Columbia, in Victoria, and then return to Seattle, seven days. I'll get into a little more detail about the stops a little later. So you'll notice uh, there are some specials on there. Uh, and once again, I'll explain a little bit about that later. But so there are other Alaska cruises that Princess offers as well. There's a seven-day inside passage cruise from Vancouver. They have 11-day inside passage cruises, round trip San Francisco, plus some unique departures up to 22 days from Los Angeles. However, the cruise that we'll see the most of Alaska is called the seven-day Voyage of the Glaciers Cruise. So this cruise sails for seven days between Vancouver and Anchorage, and it will cruise for thir over 1,300 miles in one direction, either northbound from Vancouver to Anchorage or southbound from Anchorage to Vancouver. And this cruise always includes two special days of glacier cruising, including Glacier Bay National Park on every sailing, as well as disembarkation stops in those scenic Alaska towns, Skagway, Juneau, Ketchikan, and also includes a day of cruising through the Inside Passage as well. So the absolute best way to see Alaska is when we combine this Voyage of the Glaciers seven-day cruise that goes 1,325 miles along the coast of Alaska with days of land travel through the Alaska interior. And that is what we call a cruise tour. This is where you really get to experience the glaciers, mountains, wildlife, and natural history that make Alaska such a unique itinerary. So as I became more knowledgeable about Alaska, I developed a good idea of what I wanted our clients to experience on their Alaska vacation. When I researched what the different suppliers and tour operators were offering, I never could find what I felt was the perfect itinerary 
from their standard offerings. In other words, there were specific places and things I wanted our guests to experience on their Alaska vacation within a reasonable time frame. So I researched and I even experienced the different cruise tour itineraries from all the Alaska suppliers that include Royal Caribbean and Celebrity, Holland America, Norwegian, Princess, and even some independent tour operators. And I could not find what I felt was the perfect itinerary. Princess actually came the closest. So 20 years ago, I sat down with their top management and asked them if they would allow me to design a custom tour itinerary that would visit the most important points of interest. This way we get the best of both worlds. We have the benefit of the wonderful Princess Alaskan expertise and infrastructure, but with a private itinerary that would make sure we hit the most must see Alaska attractions and be designed exclusively for us at Best Cruises. They agreed. And what we actually did was take the best of the princess itineraries. We upgraded them where necessary, added exclusive amenities and enhancements to make them more guest friendly. We set aside space on the ships, the trains, the lodges, and created this cruise tour that is actually a custom princess cruise tour that is unavailable to anyone but Best Cruises clients. And 2025 will be the 20th year we are running this Best Cruises exclusive tour. We do it three times a season. And this is our 14 day Heart of Alaska custom cruise tour. We're gonna walk through this tour so you can get an idea of what we feel are the most important points of interest on any Alaska vacation. So to give you an idea of what to expect on this Alaska cruise tour vacation, let's welcome back Randy, our senior tour leader, Alaska expert, and Best Cruises. By the way, she's also Best Cruises COO. And she's going to walk you through the land portion of this 14-day Heart of Alaska custom cruise tour. So Randy, um, take <laughs> Hi, everybody. As Jeff said, my name is Randy Dixon. I have been working for Best Cruises for 26 years and escorting this Alaska tour for about 13 years. I've escorted the tour multiple times a summer. So somewhere in the 20s is the amount of time I've escorted this particular tour. I'm also heavily involved in the logistics of the tour and getting everything organized every year before everybody goes to Alaska. So I'm going to take you guys through a virtual journey of the land portion of our custom cruise tour. So our tour is a southbound tour. And what that means is we're going to start in the northernmost point, which is Fairbanks, and we're going to continue south on the land for six nights. It's approximately 400 miles. And then we're going to sail from Whittier all the way to Vancouver on the seven night voyage of the glaciers cruise. So you'll be covering about 1700 miles via land and sea. Fairbanks is Alaska's second largest city. It's got a population of about 32,000 people. It is located 188 miles from the Arctic Circle. So it experiences some of the wildest temperature swings in the world. I have personally been in Fairbanks in July when it has been 90 degrees out. And in the winter months, it can go down as low as negative 50 degrees. Fairbanks has very long summer days. When we go there in May, there is approximately 20 hours of daylight. You can get a very nice tan at 10 p.m. at night in Fairbanks. <laughs> um, on our arrival day, we meet at the Fairbanks, we're met at the Fairbanks airport by the Princess staff and transferred to the Princess Riverside Lodge for the first of two overnights. This is a great property. It's ideally located right on the banks of the Chena River. They have a beautiful deck right on the bank of the Chena River. You can go have a drink and enjoy some of that late night sunshine. So on our first morning, we have our first included breakfast. After breakfast, we go visit the Gold Dredge, number eight, which is a national historic district. It offers a unique tour of Alaska mining history, and you get the opportunity to go gold panning. 
Um, now, I'm not saying you should quit your day job, but hey, you never know. Rob has been doing this tour with me for the last 13 years. He's been there almost 20 times. And let's just say he might have finally panned enough gold to make a teeny tiny pendant, maybe. So after we do our gold panning, we're going to head off to Riverboat Landing for lunch and our afternoon cruise on the Riverboat Discovery, which is an authentic stern wheeler. On this cruise, you're going to visit the home and kennels of Susan Butcher. She's the late four-time Iditarod winner, and you're going to see her champion sled dogs in action. You will then be immersed in ancient Athabascan culture when our Alaskan native guides take you on a personalized tour of the Chena village. We're going to arrive back at the Fairbanks Lodge in time for our first included dinner. And during dinner, I will be going over important information about the tour. We have our second overnight in Fairbanks, and the following morning, after our second included tour breakfast, we board coaches for our trip to Denali. We arrive at the Denali Princess Lodge, usually around noon. There are quite a few restaurants where you can grab some lunch, including Fanny Q's, Grizzly Burger, Prospectors, and Lynx Pizza, to name a few. The Denali Lodge overlooks Denali National Park and the Nanana River. It's located just one mile from the entrance to the park, and it really is the perfect launch point for our Denali experience. In the afternoon, you have a lot of free time for optional activities. This is a terrific area for some of the active options like whitewater rafting, hiking, or flight seeing. You can also take a complimentary shuttle to the Denali National Park Visitor Center. You can learn about the park by interacting with the park rangers and as well as exploring an exciting exhibit area. That evening, we have an included dinner at Denali Lodge's fine dining venue, King Salmon. The following morning, we do our deep exploring into Denali National Park and Preserve. Denali National Park and Preserve encompass an amazing 6 million acres of subarctic wilderness. It's the size of the state of Connecticut. It is home to Denali, North America's highest peak soaring 20,320 feet into the sky. It's spectacular. And there is only one road from the entrance of the park to its termination 90 miles away. The park hosts a wonderful array of wildlife. We hope that we get to see the Denali Big Five, and that are bears, caribou, moose, gray wolves, and doll sheep. The scenery is absolutely spectacular. This trip could wind up being one of the highlights of your Alaskan adventure. It is personally one of my favorite parts of the trip. Most Alaska tours include only a four hour natural history tour. It goes about 17 miles into the park. Our tour features a six hour tundra wilderness search that goes 43 miles into the park, which is really as far as you can safely go into the park. The road is unpaved and the tour is guided by a knowledgeable driver guide who is actually a trained interpretive naturalist. When he or she is able, he will take video footage of animals along the park roads and project these images onto drop-down video screens featured only on our specialized tour buses. This way you get a close-up look at the roadside action. Of course, hopefully we're going to get some action right up next to the bus, which happens quite frequently. And during the trip, there are multiple stops with scenic overlooks and clean restrooms. All along the way, we have the opportunity, if the weather cooperates, to see Denali the mountain. Unfortunately, we don't always get to see it in all its glory as the mountain makes its own weather. But if we miss seeing it, we have additional opportunities along the way on our tour. After our Denali adventure, we're going to head by motor coach to the Mount McKinley Wilderness Lodge. We arrive in time for dinner which is another included fine dining experience at the premier restaurant on the premises. We overnight at the McKinley Princess Lodge. That's our, that's our fourth night on the tour. It is the closest lodge to the mountain. It is approximately 45 miles from the base of the mountain. So if we didn't get to see the mountain in the park because of the weather or cloud cover, here's another great opportunity to get to see Denali. The McKinley Princess Lodge actually borders on the south side of Denali National Park on the bank of the Chalitna River 
and it is a true wilderness retreat. In the main lodge, there's a huge stone fireplace and enormous floor to ceiling windows that look out upon majestic Denali and the entire Alaska range with, with one of the most inspirational views of the mountain found anywhere, weather permitting. Actually, remember we have a lot of daylight at this time. So you can register at the front desk at this hotel. And if the mountain comes out at 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night, they will call you in your room so that you can go to the back deck and catch those views of the mountain. This lodge, it's phenomenal. It features U.S. park ranger presentations. It's got mountain climber talks, plus a variety of optional, exciting outdoor adventures. So after our overnight at the McKinley Lodge, we're gonna head to the town of Talkeetna to the rail station to board the train and head for Anchorage. Now, Talkeetna is a quintessential Alaska town. If you've ever seen the show Northern Lights, the town on the show is based on Talkeetna. I highly recommend that everybody go into town a little early to explore. There's a lot of little shops. You can grab a drink or a bite at one of the microbreweries or restaurants, or even indulge in some Shirley's homemade ice cream, which never disappoints. Um, our train that we're going to board in the town of Talkeetna includes ultra dome cars, which allow for unobstructed views of Alaska's spectacular scenery. The train ride also features table side beverage service and natural history narratives from the car managers. And each car has open air viewing platforms that allow you to step outdoors for the perfect picture or a breath of fresh air. The train ride is approximately three hours. You can get table service and snacks to your, to your seat, or you can even experience a full meal in the dining car. Uh, we arrive in Anchorage usually about 5.30 in the evening, and we transfer to our hotel, which is the Captain Cook Hotel, which is the highest rated hotel in Alaska. Anchorage is Alaska's largest city, and one of the first things that you're gonna notice when you pull into Anchorage is it is surrounded by the majestic Chugach Mountains. That night we have a wonderful tour dinner all together at the Captain Cook Hotel, and that is our dinner number four. The next morning, our tour takes us to the Native Heritage Center where we learn about Alaskan native traditions and tour life-size village sites and explore native art and experience native dancing and storytelling. That afternoon, we cut you guys loose to enjoy Anchorage on your own. You can visit the world-class museum that features the Smithsonian Arctic Study Center. You can experience Ship Creek, which is a salmon run right in the heart of city. People actually fish there during their lunch hour for dinner. You can take a walk or bike ride on the Tony Knowles Coastal Trail, which is an 11 mile stretch that starts in downtown Anchorage and it ends in Kincaid Park. It's one of Anchorage's prime moose viewing spots with spectacular panoramic views all along the way. You could take a trolley ride around the city and surrounding area to learn about the history of Anchorage or perhaps even visit the zoo. That evening, we reconvene for a special farewell dinner at my all-time favorite restaurant, and that is the Glacier Brew House. And we call it fine dining with sawdust on the floor. And we spend our second and final night in Anchorage, and that completes our six-night land tour. In the late morning, on day seven, we head for our ship in Whittier, which is the deep water port for Anchorage. It's super scenic two hour drive down Turnigan Arm and past Portage Glacier. You're gonna board the ship in time for lunch, have a chance to explore a little bit and after a bit of dinner and after dinner, the ship will depart. Um, so I'm gonna turn the presentation back over to Jeff who's gonna go over the seven night cruise portion of the trip and I'll be back for question and answer later on in the presentation. Okay, Randy, thank you so much. Thank you, I'm getting anxious <laughs> to go. You got me all excited. Anyway, okay, so we have arrived at our ship in Whittier. We arrive uh, basically in time for lunch. Um, historically, we leave Anchorage at 11 o'clock uh, a.m. It's a two hour, absolutely super, as Randy said, super scenic ride uh, to get to Whittier. And um, we we get there in time for lunch. We explore the ship, and the ship will depart after dinner. 
So after our, our evening, our first full day of sea, we visit Hubbard Glacier, <clears throat> excuse me. And Hubbard Glacier is located in Yakutat Bay. It's close to 80 miles long from its source in Canada's Yukon Territory. It's the longest tidewater glacier in Alaska. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. And it has an open calving face of over six miles. So the ship will get as close as is safe. Onboard naturalists will explain all the amazing surroundings. So our next day, <clears throat> excuse me again, we enter Glacier Bay National Park. And Glacier Bay National Park is an environmentally sensitive area. So the National Park Service only allows two of these big ships a day into Glacier Bay National Park. And Princess is one of the few cruise lines that has these permits. Um, so Glacier Bay, 3.3 million acres, more actively calving, calving tidewater glaciers than anywhere else in the world. And U.S. park rangers come aboard the ship and narrate our transit through the national park. They'll do enrichment lectures in the theater <clears throat> and set up a national parks area to interact with you guys. <clears throat> Excuse me again. So the ship will linger for a full hour in front of the Grand Pacific and Marjorie Glaciers, waiting and hoping for the glaciers to cap. Now, Marjorie Glacier is one mile wide, 25 stories high, and it is one of Alaska's most active glaciers. So this day into Glacier Bay National Park, like Randy said, the day into Denali National Park could be one of the highlights. This also could be one of the highlights of your trip. So after our two days of glacier cruising, our first disembarkation stops after it is in Skagway. And Skagway retains the flavor of the gold rush of the late 1800s. It's preserved as a National Historic Park, features one of the oldest narrow gauge railroads in the country. It was the gateway to the Klondike for the Stampeders in the 1890s. And in its heyday, this rough and tumble Frontier Town boasted more than 80 bars, 80 bars in this little town. Today, it's a recreated gold rush town with rustic board, boardwalks, frontier style storefronts. And our next day, we are in Juneau. And Juneau is the state capital and Southeast Alaska's largest town. It was founded as a gold mining camp in 1880. It's built into the side of a mountain as you can see, with spectacular views of Mount Juno and Mount Roberts. It is the most isolated state capital in the entire United States. It's only accessible by plane or by boat. Um, and there's actually a glacier in the Juno city limits, 13 miles from the city center. It's called Mendenhall Glacier, and it's 12 miles long, one and a half miles wide. You could see the glacier on a float trip or a flight sing adventure or hike up one of its trails for a closer inspection. Mendenhall Visitor Center is filled with photos, information, and one of the more spectacular excursions is a helicopter flight over the Juneau ice fields, which is larger than the state of Rhode Island and land on Mendenhall Glacier. In Juneau, we find also some of our best opportunities for whale watching as well. And, and final stop <clears throat> on our cruise is Ketchikan. And Ketchikan is set amidst the largest national forest in the United States. It's called the Tongass, T-O-N-G-A-S-S. -S. National forest, it stretches more than 500 miles along Southeast Alaska Inside Passage. It is a temperate rainforest as opposed to a tropical rainforest. And Ketchikan was originally a Native American fishing camp and boasts one of the world's largest collection of totem poles. And also Ketchikan had a rough and ready past and in its heyday boasted more than 30 brothels, 30 brothels, okay. So then we continue our cruise <clears throat> through the inside passage and finish in Vancouver. 
And that is the end of our 14-day Heart of Alaska Custom Cruise Tour. It includes six nights on the land and seven nights on the cruise. So we have departure dates for this tour, one in late May, one in July, and one in August. Our prices range on this tour for the most reasonable room category on our earliest tour uh, from $29.99 a person up. And as you go later into the season, the more peak season, they escalate. And if you decide to take this tour, you will have a Best Cruises Alaska specialist that will escort this land program. So anyway, of course, everybody can't go away for 14 days. Princess offers also some shorter cruise tours. Our favorite includes an 11 night cruise and land package that features four nights on land, seven nights on the cruise. That option is great for folks that don't have a full two weeks. We don't recommend anything shorter than four nights on the land and seven nights on the cruise. And as these trips are shorter, they have less inclusions, they do tend to cost a bit less. And there are other packages and itineraries that are available if you have any special interest. <clears throat> so if we haven't touched on your special interest, contact us. Remember, we are Alaska experts. So just to recap what we talked about today, we talked about in detail on a 14 day custom Alaska cruise tour that sees it all six nights on land, nine meals included, a custom itinerary not available anywhere else with an escort and tour guide on the land, plus that seven night voyage of the glaciers cruise. And we hit upon all the different spots um, that were on that seven day uh, round trip Seattle cruise as well. We just briefly talked about an 11-night cruise and land package, seven-night voyage of the Glaciers cruise, and four nights on land that would feature Denali National Park and Fairbanks or Denali National Park and Anchorage. And we talked about just a seven-night cruise from Seattle. So we conduct these webinars to give you the opportunity to learn about the different options Pick the trip that's most suitable and get it booked with the best available prices, amenities, and choice of staterooms. Remember, we're looking at 2025. So we have a great, perfect timing to get the best choice of staterooms. It had Alaska 25 already has been booking well. Space is disappearing as we speak. So if you are interested in going to Alaska in 2025, now is the time to get organized. So within the next two days, you will be receiving a link via email to go directly to our Cruises to Alaska website page to review the details. Prices for the Alaska departures are listed on the website and these prices reflect what's called the princess standard pricing. Princess Standard includes your accommodations, the complimentary dining, access to the onboard entertainment, and is designed for travelers who prefer a straightforward cruise experience without the addition of premium amenities. And Princess also has two amenity packages. They have one called Princess Plus, and the Princess Plus has um, uh, it's a beverage package that has uh, drinks up to $15 each and 15 per day. So if you, you can actually have 15 alcoholic beverages each day, but if you only have 10, you can't have 20 the next day. I'm teasing you, of course. If 15 uh, drink beverages per day, Wi-Fi included, one device per guest. The gratuities are included. There are some other issues like the premium desserts and fitness classes, or there is the Princess Premier, 
and the Princess Premier has upgraded stuff. So you can uh, uh, book this trip with either Princess Standard, Princess Plus, and Princess Premier. And we'll be happy to go over the actual details of those different um, amenity packages. <laughs> so for also for all our webinar attendees today, we have some webinar show specials. So these are, are as follows. Number one, we have full of only a hundred dollars a person. And those deposits um, are fully refundable up until the final payment which is due 90 days before your trip starts. So there's no penalties, you have the refundable deposits. Each stateroom will have two sets of coupon books for onboard savings at, it's over $300 per person. And then we have a special onboard credit uh, for our July and August tour. So you get an additional $100 spending money on the ship. So those are our, specials for our cruise tour participants and we have to get organized by may 29th which is think about two weeks um and that's the cutoff date for the show, show specials so tonight we heard about alaska we heard about princess we heard about best cruises and tours and as i said before we'll be sending each of you an email with links to all of this information including detailed pricing, preferred sailing dates for everything we went over, and you should receive it within the next 48 hours. And here is our contact information. It's coming. There it is. <laughs> Feel free to reach out by phone or email, or you can visit us on the web. We will connect you to one of our Alaska experts that can answer all of your questions and help you get your Alaska vacation organized Reminder to reserve your space requires just $100 per person deposits, fully refundable up to 90 days before your departure in 2025. And I am looking and it does look like we have some um, time for Q&A. Randy, you are back. I am back. All right. So I'm looking uh, uh, what is the best time of year to go? and on the cruise have rough water. So uh, I'm gonna answer that one. So we picked the three, the, the Alaska season start has started already and it finishes it, each, each each year, the cruise lines try to extend it and, and, and all the way through September. We've picked what we feel are the, are the best times to go. And each time is a little different. May, uh, Randy, you uh, agree with me there, You've got a lot of babies with the animals. A lot of babies in May. It's a, one of my favorite times to go is the May trip. Every trip has something special, but May typically, you know, got a lot of babies at that time down low in the park. So sometimes you get to see some of those baby animals with their mamas. Also, also in um, in, in May and June, you have um, almost a 20, you could read a book at night because of the solstice is mid June. So um you you never you'd really have don't get dark august i i love august as well once in a while I get an opportunity of seeing the aurora um but um it's really they're all the three different departures uh july is the peak season to kind supposedly it's the best weather but of course the great unknown in alaska is the weather you just can change. Am I correct, right, Randy? You can change. If you it. don't like it, wait five minutes because it's bound to change. <laughs> yes. So uh, it, it's all good. And and as as far as your question about rough waters, this uh, generally you're in in you're in enclosed waterways for ninety percent of this trip, ninety five percent. So uh, it is probably the mildest, uh, mildest. Uh, cruising that you can find um you're in the inside passage uh for 90 percent of this trip okay uh let's see got how, how much... far in advance can you book so yeah. um 
you you can book now. People are already booking. People already have booked. We have quite a few people on that May date booked already. So booking is open and we do highly recommend that if you are interested in going in 2025, you start to get yourself organized before the space is gone. Yes. And um, as far and the other thing is that is, there's no detriment to booking early. So in other words, if we have our reservation in place and Princess comes out with some kind of a super duper special that we, we are able to apply it to a, whatever reservation you have. In other words, we're never penalized for booking early. So that's very important. Okay, I'm looking uh, how much are the excursions? Well, they vary. They're... Uh, there are excursions that uh, are, in other words, there are coach excursions that are pretty reasonable. And then there are some, I think uh, this year, if you wanted to take a helicopter in Juneau, land on the glacier and then go dog sledding, I think it was what, about 700 bucks a person. So Something it, like that. Yeah, Something like varies, that. It varies. It depends on what you want to do. Um, I believe they're the, uh, 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 you could look on the princess website. Um, so how far in advance? So um, motion, let's see. Uh, oh, somebody's asking what ship, what princess ship sails on our tour for next year? Um, I have to look and see which one, to be honest with you, Randy, off the top of my head. I do not. Okay. I do not. I know the Sapphire is doing the one we have for this year for 2020, Correct. but 2024. Um, and price protection, we discussed insurance. Yet we uh, Insurance is available <clears throat> and it's based on your specific need, but we really don't address the insurance until you have some exposure, which is not till the final payment. So um, unless there are specific circumstances that we need insurance uh, in advance. Um, we really don't need to address it until you guys have some financial exposure. So I think, is that, I think we, we kind of, we're done. Yeah. Right? Okay. <laughs> All right. So once again, I just, that's a, if we did, please don't hesitate to give us a call or email. If you think of a question after, you'll be getting the follow-up email mm -hmm. from us. A oh, couple, um, couple other questions, Jeff. You got what about airfare and military discounts? Oh yes. So Princess has a military discount. Uh, not a discount. It's an additional onboard credit. Princess recognizes our active and retired veterans and uh, both uh, Canadian and United States. So there is a um, ec additional onboard credit for our. Um, our veterans or our active military and um, air. Is that the other? Yes. Yep. So Princess has an excellent air program. Um, well, you know, it depends. Air is personal. So if somebody has miles, then they want to do it themselves. If they do in that case, then the transfers are included. Um, or Princess has an air program uh, which is terrific because you can actually uh, organize your air without having to pay for it until the final payment. Um, it's called Easy Air and um, it's terrific. Uh, so there are different ways to do the air. Uh, people can do them on their own. We can help them with Princess or we can help them independently. Um, the transfers are all included. So uh, when we do the air with the guests, we uh, make sure all the logistics are perfect as far as coming and going. Uh, and I just confirmed, Jeff, uh, for the other um, uh, Donna who asked about the um, ships that are traveling. Yeah. So for 2025, um, May is going to be the Caribbean Princess and July and August will be the Sapphire Princess. Oh, okay. 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 All right. So I want to thank everybody once again for uh, their attention. We will look forward to hearing from you and um, you will look forward to hearing from us within the next 48 hours. 
And um, I'm going to answer one more question. I'm sorry, Jeff. We just got a late question about who handles luggage. So uh, the great thing about this tour is your luggage travels separately from you. And Princess does a phenomenal job with the luggage. So I would say to you, for example, okay, breakfast in the lodge runs from 6 to 9 p.m., uh, 6 to 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. You need your bags out at 7.30 and we're going to leave the lodge at 9.15. So you would leave your bags out where I ask you to leave them, usually inside the room or outside the room. They will come pick your bags up and they will be moved to the next lodge for you. So that is how the luggage is handled. Yeah, and e e even when you when you arrive in Fairbanks, um, you you will be meeting your princess representative there, and the princess representative will uh, collect your luggage and take it to the lodge, and will be delivered to your room. And then, as Randy said, from each lodge to lodge, uh, they move your bags and you find them in your room. Uh, the the uh, the next day, and or when you're in uh, Anchorage, um, they send them to the you directly to the ship. So you're not you're really not handling luggage at all. Okay, I think let's just think of one more look at the Q and A. Um, yeah, fair. We discussed military discounts. Who handles? Thank. Okay, vegetarian food. Yes. Um, absolutely. There's a uh, vegetarian uh food available uh all the way through land as well as cruise um there's all uh, not just vegetarian there's um there's indian vegetarian available it's uh they're terrific with all that stuff okay and um uh one last question we see can we get a copy of this recording and when uh we send you the um the the information in the next 48 hours there will be a way for you to go on and and see this recording i'm flattered that somebody wants to pop <laughs> <laughs> okay anyway um all right guys i'm gonna say thank you again and we really we appreciate your attendance and uh, we would love to hear from you and we'd love to host your alaska vacation and Carol, the flight itinerary, it depends from New York or New Jersey. When you're going to Fairbanks, um, there's always going to be a stop. It could be in Chicago. It could be in Minneapolis. It could be in Seattle. So we could discuss air um, by from different gateways. When somebody's making a booking, we can go over all that air information for you guys. Okay. All right. All right. Good afternoon. To, well, good. still good morning. One more minute. Okay. Uh, good morning. And any of uh, the additional questions, just uh, uh, give us a call. You have the number. Our, it's on the uh, the contact information, and we'll look forward to hearing from you. Have a great afternoon and a great day, and thank you again. Bye-bye now.